3D politics. I've got all three Davids of Davids that matter. David Van, David Oldham, and David D'Ambroso here today on 3D politics to talk about the House. The House has named a special counsel in a sexual misconduct investigation of legislators. Let's hear it, David. Well, this is something that Al Gerhardt with Sooner Tea Party broke almost two weeks ago, and not much has happened. Now, you've got a victim who really would rather not relive all of this stuff. And my understanding is that uh, that victim may have already uh, been interviewed by the special counsel. But this is, uh, her name's Chelsea Smith, is the special counsel attorney with Fellers and Snyder. And uh, so last night, uh, late yesterday afternoon, uh, Al Gerhardt, Senior Tea Party, gets an email after he sends all of the interview files that he did with the uh, purported victim and sends it to them. Well, they don't like having this evidence in the speaker's office, the speaker being responsible for evidence, because then if you don't act, then all of a sudden you're considered part of a cover-up. So this email from um, Mr. Rose at, uh, I think it was, uh, well, anyway, he says, uh, hey, just want to let you know, I haven't listened to any of the tapes, haven't done any, but I've given it all to special counsel. Don't bother us anymore. Send everything you got, any more dirt that's out there, send it to the special counsel. So they're a little bit nervous about this. And at the same time, I'd have to say, yeah, they are doing it right. So we finally have some action happening on these allegations. And then... A mayor of an Oklahoma City just came forward and said, hey, I've got another victim just came to me and saying, when do I get my justice? So it looks like we've got another victim, again, another married woman, and her husband was witness to this. Okay, before we move on, I've heard a lot about victims. We don't know what the victim... Alleged victimized. victim. Mm -hmm. I have no okay. idea what we're talking about. Right. So, it, evidently, it was uh, the speaker's birthday party early... early well, mid Speaker who? Speaker Charles McCall of okay. uh, the Oklahoma House. In 2017, they had a number of events and, a, you know, a lot of the freshman members trying to connect with leadership and all that decides, well, you got to socialize with them and there's some that you find to socialize, evidently, uh, because a little after party took place down at uh, Nick's Diner and Lounge, and which uh, this victim says that she was kind of pinned in and... Uh, an area she couldn't get out of, and one candidate, uh, one politician starts pulling up porno videos. Now wait, this story's been corroborated by others, right? Is this the case? Uh, that's what? that's my understanding. So it's kind of like the anti-Kavanaugh already. Yeah. We already have people corroborating the story. Right. Versus no one corroborating. Right. Does she know how she got there and how she yeah. left? And okay. Yes. It, you know, okay. But the difficulty is you've got a young female married lawmaker according to wow. the, to Al's writing and she um, she really really does not want the limelight of this right. as any person who feels violated tends right. to feel that's that's she's not drawn into the limelight because this has become news um this did get out and uh, I'm not going to get into it. I've spoken with her husband myself wow. and I know it's a uh, it's difficult, and I'm not going to name who it is. I think there's a lot of people who have figured out who it is, because it's not that hard. All right, well, let's talk I, about I, what we know instead of what we don't know. What is the importance of this issue? Well, when you've got a lawmaker who's in leadership feeling up your leg, while another lawmaker is showing you graphic porno videos, and you want to get the heck out of there. And, and t through intimidation... Holding you against well, the Well, allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. It, it, this according to the story, this according alleged. to the no narrative. The, right. My understanding <laughs> now is that at least one major media outlet or media, you know, commercial media, has interviewed. They're just, if she's not willing to come forward, they at least want some other lawmaker who's being accused. I heard the AP's looking into this. Well, that that is one speculated uh, 
And yes, I've heard yeah. they've corroborated it, but we'll find out. Yeah. It, we'll well, find with out. other people, right. And unless she's willing to go forward, they feel like, well, they need somebody to deny it before they'll go with the story. <laughs> so, I, the, the narrative, the funny thing is, you've got at least one lawmaker, last I heard, that it's a game of cat and mouse around the Capitol, and the press are looking for them, and they're trying to get things done, and it's, it's a very interesting scenario going on. Uh, but this is what's been going on just this week. Uh, in fact, according to a letter, in, in uh, well, an article I published last night in SoonerPolitics.org, is about what happened yesterday. And uh, we've got people trying to say, hey, be patient, we're working the system, there's a way which it needs to work, but when you're a citizen journalist, like Al Gerhardt, and you get these kinds of things all the time, because there's sometimes commercial media just really isn't interested, mm -hmm. because they're motivated by other things. And Al's question is probably fair, and I would assume, and I don't mean to speak for him, but how long is too long to wait? Am I going to give right. you that? Two months, six months, a year, right. five years, ten years. At some point, you at least got to start the clock. Yeah. Right. And, right. When, and now when you find out, hey, this isn't the only allegation, and now a mayor uh, comes What's your opinion? Forward. How long should Al wait? I mean, totally your opinion. Well, How long should you wait for the process to work itself? Well, I, I think, you know what? Eight if months? you're committed as a citizen journalism that you want this dealt with, you put everything on the line for it, your own integrity, your own reputation... And you're trying to help somebody, especially somebody who feels very violated, uh, then I think you want a response. Absolutely. And, and even though other media outlets seem to be sitting on their hands. So is there a process time, mm -hmm. though? And that's what I'm trying to get to. You know, yeah. Obviously, not every case is the same. Right. But I think there should be an absolute red line right. cutoff to say, yeah. hey, I'm going to give you guys... 12 months. Yeah. I think that's fair. Right. And I'm blowing the doors open. Well, this yeah. is this is different than so many of the other cases. This is this is a case that does not appear that it was reported when it happened or or a while ago to yeah. the leadership. So this is brand new to them. This is not like mm. where they were covering up past yeah. indiscretions and paying out of maintenance fund monies yeah. to to you know, employees who are harassed mm -hmm. and, and sexually battered and so forth uh, to pay them off and, and get rid of them. Uh, so in this particular case, we have a different clock than normal, yeah. than, than what we've seen yeah. in the past. And, and Al did something, and again, you kind of learn as you go on these things. When he sent all of his interview files to the speaker's office, he unwittingly started the clock because until they had evidence possession, they didn't have to do anything. Well, they didn't have any responsibility. Right. 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 Now that there's evidence, whose responsibility is it to hang on to, to see that evidence, to act on it? Where are we and, live at, by the way? I'm trying to share this. Uh, on, we are on uh, Sooner Politics Facebook page, okay. not the group, and I believe OTU Media. Which, unfortunately, <laughs> so. they've been watching me look at you mostly, yeah. and you've been doing all the talking. They can't even see you. Yeah, they got so my they heads should, up in the corner. You should probably crank it up. Uh, no, they, it's good to see you, folks. It looks no, like Batman. Batman. You just but, see yeah. the important part of it. But, now. Yeah, it's chiseled jaw. Let's, let's get back to the topic. So, uh, at this point now, we an attorney, uh, Chelsea Smith, who's held in high regard with by her law firm and has worked in the office. I'm sorry, am I interrupting your show? <laughs> I'm just sharing it. Way to go, David. That's the thing about live TV, guys. Sorry. Now I know what my pastor feels like on Sunday when he's preaching and I'm down here scrolling through my smartphone. <laughs> sorry, Thank guys. I, I, I don't have a television okay. production degree. I don't know that I, I shouldn't play the live video on the live stream. That's how unsophisticated I am. Dead. I just learned about said, disposals I, today, like Cortez. Like oh, David, did. I got a question. There's a lot of talking we're doing about things we don't really know. No, it's a lot of hearsay. It's a lot of alleged stuff. How is anything bad to anybody going to happen on any... What is the timing like? What does this have to do with the timing of an election or a, a chairman committee? Or what does it have to do with you timing? You know, it's, we're getting towards the end of a session. And, uh, and I think people feel like it's better for the lawmakers to handle this officially while they're in session... 
Because I don't think this is the kind of thing you call a special session to investigate. The most recent case we had came out in December before of 2016. Everybody had been elected. They just came in a few weeks early, a few of them on the committee, to investigate. Uh, this would be much like an interim study if we don't uh, handle it in session. And, and they're getting ready to adjourn for the, for the spring session in about two weeks. And we're live on my channel, too. So can we give everyone like a 15-second no. summary of what's going on? <laughs> Sorry, did he interrupt you? There, <laughs> there, there are new allegations of sexual misconduct by various legislators. Nobody has directly come forth. The Oklahoma State Legislature. The Oklahoma State Legislature. Special counsel has been appointed. Like Special like counsel Mueller. has been has been okay. appointed by House leadership. We'll probably okay. get this done within now, 24 the, months. The accused are Representative Chris Kennedy and Representative um, uh, McDougal. All right, now we should have started. We can right say that. There. Yeah. All right. That's right where we should have started this. I'm 10 glad minutes. we can say that now. I'm getting coaching. Folks. I've been wow. sitting on that for a while. Yes. Ten minutes. All right. Uh, but anyway, so and they're being accused. And my question is, this uh, what you said a minute ago was this didn't? It wasn't like this thing happened and she screamed running from the clubhouse and then it was turned in the next day. There was a period of time that went by and she did or didn't do something about it. Right. Yeah. How long? Well, evidently this happened in the spring of 2017. And we're just now learning about and it two in years later. And in 2018, later. she went to the media. So now she, so she now according to some of my sources. I mean, what does it matter? That she. Well, I have a lot she, of questioning. I'm going she, for. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> you just interrupted us. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> according to some of my sources. Uh, she did tell a number of people in her close circle, including her husband, that night, bawling, according to her testimony. Okay. And uh, other people were interviewed who corroborated the facts. So this isn't like a Kavanaugh accusation where the narrative changes over the weeks, months, years, and decades. Right. This corroborated is the facts yeah. of what she said happened right. based on what happened, yes. not corroborated the facts on that something uh, yeah. uh, it's the anti Kavanaugh. Right. Well, right. that there are facts that, that her that her yeah. that her accusations were factual. Has not been Thank thirty you. years. Yes. We've got corroborating sources, yeah. so, et cetera. Yeah. Now keep in mind when you're a freshman lawmaker, uh, getting in with leadership is probably one of your highest priorities. At least being on good terms. And so a lot of abuse actually does happen uh, and is tolerated in those situations, much like it would be in corporate America. You know, or in a frat house. Or frat in, house, in, yeah. In so Haiti. I've been going to the wrong so corporations when, and the wrong frat houses. I don't know where that's... i I, I got a challenge. This is all I, I, I don't agree with that at all. Because when we're it, not liberals, we don't well, believe these we're not, claims. We're not, we're I, don't I don't agree with that We're not talking either. just... I don't think that... that I, I disagree with the contention that... All over America, in corporations, somehow abuse is tolerated just to get in good with the boss. I just don't think it happens that way. Well, not, I, I don't know about corporations. I, don't, I, I didn't, mean, I didn't in, say in that. What did you say? Wait, hold on, I hold said, on, I said that in. it's a narrative that does exist. Okay. I didn't say it's universal. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, so when you have these kinds of pressures, and you certainly have, as a young woman, a young married woman, you have... Uh, a certain amount of self-respect where you draw the line and thank God there are people you know who do draw the line you know, when you're not respected when you are punished because you've rejected somebody's advances this especially when they're in leadership do we have evidence this occurred in the Oklahoma State Legislature well, with the I'm, accused? No, I'm, this is a scenario that we really need okay. to hear from that person on okay because I'm Remains just saying, to be seen. Yes. If it had been, you know, for instance, the Kevin McDougal thing. They're both freshmen, right? He's just hitting on her, right? He's Yeah, he's got a wife back home in, in Coweta that he's cheating on, but nonetheless, you in know. a very progressive relationship. Uh, when you've got a member of leadership, a chairman of a committee. It's uh, progressing. Who's, That's progressing. Who's feeling your leg, you know, that's another thing. Again, this is the narrative that's on the tape. 
But okay. let's also understand this is part of a larger thing that he goes beyond sexual harassment into harassing of freshman legislators. It's regular that that conservatives mm. are are try they try to force conservatives to break from their conservative values, and they do it at these kinds of things, and they do it from these hazing type. Type events rituals and, and almost. rituals almost, yeah. where they where they try to put people into their place and bring them into the fold, as it were. Now, and, and ever... use and and, the, and it goes to to denying mm. of of you know leadership posts and committee memberships. Won't hear or your bills. Won't hear your bills. All of that. One. It's all part of it. We know it's there, and it's only worse. Well, for they the won't women. hear any of Silk's bills or Senator Dom's bills here in the Oklahoma State Legislature because of uh, their support for uh, yeah. their abortion bill. Um, well, and then another narrative is if they can find your weakness and actually get you to compromise your morals, yes. then they can hold that as blackmail over you. Yeah, they, they, they wouldn't do that. They told me, uh, that, David, uh, they called no, me and they said, we would not do that. <laughs> never. It, it's no, ethically never wrong. I, I'm just wrong, saying, illegal, that's man. the Frank Underwood narrative. <laughs> you know, find out what their vices are and then use of that. Course it is. Them, yeah. Of course it is. That's why you have to yeah. remain above it. Uh, mm -hmm. And and it's and it it's sad that these kinds of things happen in the in the and I just hate it that women and especially I mean all women but especially married women are put into this this situation yeah. because they don't have an out there's no out for them uh, you know I mean a, a, a single woman can make her own choices and so forth but married women have somebody else that they have you know if these allegations are true. Against representatives Kennedy and McDougal, all right. Uh, what happens to them? That's really up to the House, isn't it? And is there, it? I think these are criminal complaints, are they not? That's a very good point. If there are criminal complaints, if there's a criminal referral, then uh, it will be up to uh, DA's got to pick up on it. District Attorney David Prater is yes. he interested in this kind of thing, or are they just busy uh, throwing people in jail, you know, you, taking the rights yeah, away for parents? I rifles? don't claim to know the heart of David Prater, okay. and I'm not sure many people wow. want to find out. Gosh, it's no but, fun talking to like this and getting an opinion. And here's the thing: here's the skinny <laughs> on it. And, and I, I, when we were dealing with the Dan Kirby case a couple years ago, uh, John Eccles told me, and he's the majority floor leader. He said, "Dave, he said technically." We don't even know that we have the ability in the House to expel a member. That has not been proven out. Well, and, and let's get let's get down to this because this comes into my bugaboo, and that is that that we see these kinds of things hijack alert, and they <laughs> and they are. Uh, well, it's not really hijack. I don't think the, so. Yeah. The, the thing is that, that we yeah. see these things at, at parties and bars and things like that all the time. While there is a drunkenness provision in the Oklahoma Constitution, right. they're proving drunkenness at these that these kinds of things would be kind of difficult. No, provision? No, but no, here's drunkenness the, on the floor is what's banned generally. But yeah. alcohol in the in the in the can um, you be drunk with power? Um, I, believe it, I believe it can be also drunkenness <laughs> just as character. I, I believe, yeah. but I've got to double oh, check that. Yeah. Now, now, mind you, mind you, for judges, moral ter turpitude is a reason for, oh, for unseating right. a Time judge. For Google. So, getting to this, so I want to see that yeah. done for legislators right. because yeah. definitely point. this is moral turpitude. To, to get yeah. to the yeah. specific answer, they can deny you an office. They can deny you a legislative assistant. They can deny you participation in any committee. It's like censoring. They can, uh, yeah, censoring you have rather. nothing except right. you're allowed to vote green or red on any bill, yes or no, on any bill, and that's it. Uh, and you still get your paycheck. If you want to live that way, it's like being shunned and shamed for the next two years or however the rest of the term. Let's, yeah. let's also re let's look at this constitutionally and realize what also is going on. And, and that is that by committing such an act, mm -hmm. they have violated, if, if true, okay, mm -hmm. if factual, they have violated her rights and, and therefore violated their oath of office to uphold the Constitution. Right. 
Because so so they have committed an impeachable offense, and I don't mean impeachable. I mean convicted of perjuring themselves. Yeah. Well, they constantly violate that oath. So well, I mean, the we do. Well, we, no, we need no to no get to that point, and I'm going to harp on that. Um, Article 15 gives us a chance to 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 yeah. actually convict them and see them at least disqualified from office, Can we if not them? in prison for their perjury. If they if they just go away and the investigation ceases and does not turn into a criminal charge, uh, then the only other thing in these cases, I don't know which officer, you know, in the Marines and the Air National Guard. McDougal has... Kennedy's in the Air National Guard? Uh, I believe so. He wow. switched over, yeah. It, it, and Are it, these, they both it, serving? I believe Kennedy is still serving okay. in some capacity. I'll have to check my facts, and I don't sure. know anything. You have to be of good moral right. character to serve. So you right. may have some Which fallout We objectively there. know what that means. So that's yeah. good. So we may have some fallout on that mm. uh, as well. And so a person has a decision. Do I just want to pull the plug and hope this goes away just by resigning? I don't know. You, you have to know what they're facing. They know what they did. They know what the mountain of evidence is on them. At least I would hope they remember. You know, where, So we'll find out. But again, it's usually not that first victim that comes forward. It's the second and the third. As we found out with Dan Kirby, that first victim, he was totally uh, vindicated. Uh, in this case, you don't mean second victim. You mean corroborating witness. No, actually, no, we have a second victims. victim already. And, and this With, was at this. They held them both in the same area. No, no, no. In Separate regards, events. Same Se night. I don't know when. In regards to Kennedy and McDougal, we have a second alleged um, victim, or are you talking about Kirby? With my understanding with, uh, with Kennedy, no, another victim okay. has come forward. I don't have those details from you, but I know they were uh, included inappropriate touching. I, I, you know, I apologize for interrupting you, Dave, but I'm interacting with a live audience, and someone said it only takes allegations to bring down a man in the majority of the world. And I would add to that, I think that's true, but a conservative man. I mean, you look at Bill Clinton, yeah. you know, his alleged rapist sat in the front row of uh, the famous, sure. you know, so Clinton-Trump debates, and, mm -hmm. you know, Harvey Weinstein, there have been jokes going back 15 sure. years ago yeah. about Harvey Weinstein assaulting yeah. women. And they knew it just takes decades mm. for a liberal, but it's one allegation mm. for a conservative guy. I want you to know, I look back at Herman Cain. He was winning in the primary, I believe, in 2012. Yeah. And there were about 17 women that came with uncorroborated sure. allegations against him, and they all disappeared. I don't think there's any, not one criminal case that proceeded. Right. So these are tactics kind of like what you were talking about earlier and last week, yeah. the lawfare, where they'll, you know, the left will place a restraining order on someone yeah. so that that person can then not attend political events of which they're presiding over right. or members of. Yeah. And, uh, you know, these things are used gotcha. very cynically and illegally, I think. But yeah, contention. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, folks, we have to be careful on both sides. There are people who've been wrongly accused. And, uh, and so I got a question. To what degree have we analyzed the motivations of the victim? I mean, what are these motivations? She was inappropriately touched. She was traumatized. Did she she scratches? Did she lose her job and money? And I don't chime in here. A, alleged victim because we do have a process for determining guilt. And kind of, and I know everyone understands that, but you know right. there there is more weight to an accusation gotcha. than there are we multiple people bringing yeah. it. Yeah, no, I got your point. That's uh, important. So yeah, you know this is difficult. Um, and when you got somebody wavering, one day they say, yeah, let's run the story, and the next day, oh, I really don't want to talk about it. You know, you make it go away, you know, and stuff like that. So, I mean, if these allegations that? are true, I understand. I think that's the nature of uh, where our victim, uh, for victim number one is right now. And I understand that. Well, this is a real problem for people who don't understand consequences of behavior. I mean, clearly this shows a trend that she doesn't understand the consequences of her behavior. She got yeah. into a situation, allegedly, where she was inappropriately touched. I now understand. she says, I want to come forward, but then she doesn't want to come forward, but then she does want to come forward. Well, Tom, it's a I can, I'm, just, you, I'm asking, I don't know any of the know, facts or the people. And this is, you talk to any district attorney, they'll tell you how agonizing it is. When you have real victims, real crimes, yeah. they say, but I don't want to right. testify in court. Yeah. 
Right. And so I understand they, that. The, the district attorney has to plea away. We had a guy who kidnapped a woman, held her prisoner for a year, 17 yep. year old woman, and he gets out with probation. Probation. Right. And it was and it was all when you when you find, come down to the end the bottom of it it's because she didn't want to testify and so they they demanded the the defense said we'll we'll agree to a plea but can be no jail time yeah. and because she wouldn't push it they had nothing else yeah. they could do yeah and and Tom at the same time a defendant has a right to confront their accuser and yes. you know, we have to maintain that so it's a dilemma. And this is, a, this is a difficult thing. As difficult as it is in the courtroom, imagine in the political sphere now, being a member of a legislature, you know, because this is a tough thing for all of them. Sure. It's, it's a very difficult thing. It seems thing. that our government's hands are tied in areas where they should have easy authority, and then in simple situations where... Uh, it seems to get all muddy all of a sudden. It seems yes. like they can't do anything when they should, and then DHS can still come get your kids regardless. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so as, a, you, as a, you, government's a government, not well, I'm just saying there are yeah. governmental agencies that have control yeah. over parental decisions over children when the DA can't even press charges in a situation yeah. where somebody said, hey, yeah. something wrong. But happened. that's that's unlawful, unlawful control over your children. They're taking they they do it without any due process of law. There there's all sorts of constitutional problems with, mm. with the way DHS does their business. It's yeah. almost so like everyone has too much power in certain circumstances remember. and too little in others. Remember, yes. Yeah. Yes. Remember that famous clause in the Bill of Rights, nobody shall deprive be deprived of life or liberty without due process of law. That's well, furthermore, I'm, I'm making judgment calls based on zero almost information. I don't know any of the people involved, any of the allegations, or mm -hmm. any of the stuff. Yeah. I'm just looking well, at what you presented what happened, and I think, straining I, some logic out. I think, at some point, you have to look what, at both characters. Well, yeah. I think what David is, wanted to bring this up for was people need to look into this. We need to, we need to sure. be... Open our eyes to what's going on at the legislature. There has been a number of these kinds of stories come out mm -hmm. in the last couple of years. And the sad thing is, it's the same characters. And, the, the, and this, is, this is troubling. Because, because if any of this can be, can be shown to be actually mm -hmm. true, and that's why I'm glad somebody's finally really looking into this... It needs to be dealt with. Would I want to send my daughter to the legislature to um, to intern for these people? Uh, right at right. the moment in Oklahoma, not really. <laughs> Weren't there accusations of sexual misconduct? The Page Program, the eighteen-year-old yes. students as well. Yes. Uh, that was several years ago. That's not the same know, individuals no, involved. It was just before spring break, and they canceled <laughs> the Page Program for a week. Then found out it was a consensual thing. Okay. You know. Well, I mean, here's the thing, too. You know, the due process, going back to, you know, nothing happens in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. And it seems like Rick Hubbard was uh, deprived of his Second Amendment right without due process, without even being charged of a crime formally, mm -hmm. and that was which is guy, remarkable. He get us up speed. He, he was, was a guy carrying a rifle in a park. In a park, yes. Lawfully. Yes, lawfully. Uh, he was accused without proof, mm -hmm. right? He was accused of pointing the gun yeah. at someone, and here's a guy yeah. who's uh, engaged in this kind of activity, so, filmed yeah. for many years, and no one's ever accused him of such a thing. Yeah. Uh, and conveniently, um, you know, there are multiple cameras. There's a camera yeah. at the park. There's cameras at the baseball okay. park over there. There's a camera at the fire station, and okay. no one has filmed We're, this. Okay, let, yeah, let me just wrap this bit. up if I could for a second. So this is the dilemma when your citizen journalism, like Al Gerhardt's been doing this for about eight years, this is just one of many stories he has to decide, and you have to be sure you have enough of your facts, and you have a person telling you this narrative who's willing to not abandon you when you try to stick up for them and the injustice that they say is done. You know, this is a difficult thing. And so when you've got wavering like this, uh, Al Gerhardt has d put a lot into doing this and yeah it's been a little bit frustrating for him uh fortunately 
he actually got something done yesterday by sending the evidence mm -hmm. to the property author proper authorities who then you know impaneled special counsel it's now getting done so I would say at this point we start watching major media is going to start picking up on this they have drugged their feet they have had this evidence and uh, I think they kind of are leaving it to the citizen journalism to do the heavy lifting. To right build now. some pressure behind yeah. it. Right? So, yeah. So, so for the folks watching, check it out. Check out Sooner Politics, your yeah, article, so, mm -hmm. and, and start looking for Al's article, which has more information. And, right. And then others who are going to start talking about it because, because this, and, and I don't want, I am the first to, to abhor. Uh, allegations, you know, taking over and and people declaring guilt from allegations. Well, because it's happened to all of us, right? You live long enough, and you're going to get accused of something, and and people just assume it's true. But we don't let's have start. Let's start watching this because this is the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. and, and like I was saying, this is the sexual harassment, but the same sorts of of intimidation happen on the political realm for males and females, and it's by the same people. Hey, Kennedy's the one who was out trying to unseat fellow Republicans and, uh, and so forth who didn't vote the way he likes, and, and McDougal as well, and so forth. So this is just a, a, a sense of what is going on. Mm. These people are playing these kinds of games, we have to be aware of it. If you're not aware of it, then you're doing yourself and the state yeah. of Oklahoma a disservice. Yeah, and I think it, it does a disservice to everybody who's put on the uniform to serve our country and continues to have a servant's heart. And when you've got people arrogantly using their position, their power, their medals, you know, all of those things uh, for a sense of privilege and entitlement, uh, yeah, and if that fits, then wear the shoe. If it doesn't fit, then I wasn't talking about you. Especially with these kinds of sensitive issues, anything sexual, uh, mm -hmm. any misconduct, especially sexual, it, it, it would be better, because of the sensitivity for both sides, to have presented a more accurate bullet point of who's involved and what the sides are. We kind of spilled it out in a way that gave it a gossip feel, mm -hmm. and I don't think that's what we were trying to do. You're trying mm -hmm. to get the point out that this just is breaking news. We don't have a news team that's broken it down into prosecuting points sure. of bullet sure. points. But the fact is we've got, some, we've got some negative behavior that is apparent. Mm -hmm. It seems as though we're seeing uh, episodic evidence that is not mm -hmm. the first time probably that it's happened to, uh, and apparently we have multiple victims. Mm -hmm. And so we're just going to tune into this uh, at the state legislature. I just want to book in this real quick with some of the uh, commentatorate here, what they're saying. This is Blake Barber, and he says, uh, genocentrism is real. The public consciousness and reality has Slow become down. This polluted is by this, yet we spout equality. I'll, I'll get to his point. Okay. To even defend the image or rights of the accused under any auspices will dirty the reputation of those who do so. So, you know, I agree actually right. with the second wave feminist on this, just to, just to bookend it that, uh, you know, we have a real double standard. You have female teachers that sexually assault minors uh, and they get probation or one or two years where routinely men that sexually assault, right. uh, you know, minors, the opposite gender, get, uh, you know, perhaps decades behind bars. Sure. Sure. And so, you know, on this one, I totally agree with the second wave feminists. I believe in complete equality. And yes. if you're going to have a draft and you have a doctrine of equality, you need to draft women too. Yeah. Um, and that's what equality looks well, like. Same crime, same sentence. Especially same job, a, same pay. In the elective office, you want to serve, you want to be an you know, elected official, you put, put on your big boy pants or right. big girl pants or whatever pants fit. But by God, you want to be that's treated right. like an equal. If this is true, these allegations, this woman wasn't being treated as an equal. Correct. She's right. being treated as an object of their lust. And to be completely clear, even with that bookend on it, if these allegations are true, they're completely inappropriate in mm -hmm. action. Mm -hmm. Okay? And it seems like laws are broken here, and yeah. I think the guilty, if Kennedy and McDougal are found guilty, I think they should be punished to the fullest extent of the law. If, that's if the they're case. found guilty, yeah. in due process, yes. It's Without fair, skin yeah. under the fingernails. <laughs> How well, hard they touch it. Yeah. 
We'll see. If they're found guilty. But this, this is what's Beyond being reported. I'm just saying, to, I mean, the, the, the thing here well, is, listen, where, we don't have all where, the evidence, Tom. Where does the level of the, where does the respect of the, where, where does the responsibility of the individual come to protect themselves? Self-defense is not just a right. It's it's a duty. Sure, that exists, okay. Tom, but just simply going out to an event after work with co-workers does not invite uh, sexual harassment. Or I'm not saying it is. Sorry. No. no. And, I'm and, saying it is. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. So you have you have a woman who's sitting there at a at a booth in a in a you know a bar or diner or whatever it was, and somebody slides in next to her and all of a sudden she's trapped. I mean, what she do? What she supposed to do at that? She's point? She's supposed to use physical force. Well, that's when you start. That's well, when it you may start. be that it may be that she didn't have to do well, that. She has no not, legal no, responsibility. Once you get past to do that, that line where she feels in danger, you better start well, pushing her. Well, it sounds like she did. No, well, it sounds she like she push did. Push mm-hmm. it, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're talking no, about I hypothetical think, here. I think, we I think don't Tom, know. Well, hang on. I think Tom that you're going into something that no, hasn't even been this brought alive. up. Well, we're talking uh, about a lot of stuff that's not even proven. Is this the Don Lemon deal? Oh, you're. This is the slippery slope of your hypothetical. Is I'm bringing up the nasty other side of the equation here. Sure. And I'll answer well, your hypothetical. She could be in well, the right to engage in such defensive activity. However, she has no legal responsibility to. You know, things, so, things like that. Weakens case. Tom, there are some boys who still think they're smooth, even in their 40s. And they make the move very slight and very subtle. And many times a woman in a situation like this doesn't realize that is a sexist out. statement if I've ever heard of, of course <laughs> it is <laughs> absolutely I was raised by three I was not raised by I had three older sisters yeah okay so I I, I understand that women lie too yeah true. so there's there's true. no you know and I don't know that these gentlemen and Tom, are, you got to remember there's no such thing as gender so there can't be sexism well this Check is the problem, <laughs> this is the problem with the modern day feminist movement is they've yes. thrust the responsibility on the woman that she can no yeah. longer which she can no longer expect somebody to third wave protect feminism her. is uh, totally uh, you know, where was not other, useful for women. Where was the other woman in the room? Well, let me was she the only woman in the room? That where was the other question. man? How they supposed to how band many together? Men? What was she doing? I mean, what was she doing there? Uh, you yeah. know, I I would expect that the special counsel asked those questions. I'm Let's certain. Wait for can, the can we get into something? And I love that. Can we get into something that we can all agree on that is completely abhorrent? And should be illegal if it's not already illegal. And we're going to stay live. Yeah, yeah. The ten year old. All right, we're going to change topics here with three D politics. And we got all three Davids, the Davids that matter, and sometimes even a little bit of an argument. All right, we've got David Van, David Oldman, David Dambroso, Dambroso. Hit it. Well, I mean, you, you heard about this character Desmond is awesome. He's this ten year old, uh, I guess, LGBT icon. And I guess the boy feels like he's a homosexual. I'm not really certain. But what is certain is that he was uh, performing uh, at a gay bar for dollar bills being uh, placed yep. on his person yep. uh, like a stripper. Now, this is here's the deal. Um, I don't even know that you can be in a bar at an establishment that exists only for the purpose of serving alcohol if you're under the age of 21, at least here in Oklahoma. So what is this 10-year-old is- doing? Performing for gay men at a bar. What state did this? New York. This is New York York City. I guess that's. Is that New York law? I mean, I I guess this is a good mystery for the viewers. It should be a lot of times in bars, uh, especially like I I know from the musicians, they'll be underage, but they'll they'll special compensation for them to play in the bar. Yeah, and so that can happen. Okay, yeah. well, so fair it's an entertainment yeah. thing. Right. Yes, uh, but this would you know it sounds this like is, sex This is encouraging <laughs> pedophilia. Oh, they, they, the boy they, is acting as a stripper. Yes, the, yeah. and and dressed up in makeup and, and drag. Whole, like, basically, oh, he's, he's a drag. Dra- he's a drag, he's a drag queen. queen. He, yeah, that's right. He's a ten year old drag. Yeah, whatever they call it. And and isn't he being raised by good you know, question? A gay guy or. Couple or the, the thing is, well. this is completely it's, unacceptable, and this is the LGBT community normalizing pedophilia, and it's unacceptable. I think we can agree that this should be illegal, and it is wrong. I mean, we had a lot of alleged, alleged, alleged in the last story. We had claims, but this is absolutely wrong. I mean, there, and if society doesn't stand against it now, I think we've really lost this this social argument forever. Uh, we, we've come together and agree. You just can't leave your kid in the car when you go in the store. That's just that's endangering the child. But this somehow. Uh, doesn't endanger the child? No, it's it warps and psychologically damages the sure child. 
<laughs> so which is safer, leaving your kid in the quick trip yeah. parking lot for five minutes? Or yeah, kids in a bar actually happens pretty frequently. Oh, not in this kind of situation where they're part of the they're performing for dollars. Well, well, no, for, that's not for it. sure. The management of the bar should face felony charges on this. Because they are actually conspiring to exploit a child. And it's sexualizing the yes. child. Yes. Yes. Yeah, there, there's no doubt about that. Uh, and then you have to say, no, where's the parent? You know, you know? so Lon's writing articles about pedophiles saying, no, no, no they're not yeah. monsters. Yeah. So, you know, you've got this element of the left that is trying mm -hmm. hard mm -hmm. and somewhat succeeding yeah. in normalizing pedophilia. I mean, the left has won all these social yeah. wars. I mean, they've, uh, in a sense, been defeated by their own success. Mm -hmm. There are no social battles to fight. They, they won the normalization and legalization yeah. of, uh, of gay marriage yeah. against the will of the people. Proposition 8 in the mm -hmm. most lefty state in the Union, California, yeah. was voted down by the people. Yeah. But the super right. branch of government, the judiciary, who is also the legislative branch, apparently, legislated into law, mm -hmm. okay, no, you're going to have this case. And they're just moving yeah. on forward, forward, forward. So what I'm saying is... Here is the red line, okay. okay? The Syrian thing doesn't matter. I don't think we have a responsibility in Syria, but we have a, a responsibility here in the culture war. Right. If we can't as a society agree that this is cancerous to the very fabric of well, society, normalizing okay. pedophilia, we've lost. I've got I've a confession to make, which may explain to a lot of people how it turned out. When I was eight years old, every day I went into a tavern unescorted, on my own, it was LaFont's Tavern on 1st Street in Little Falls, Minnesota. And I delivered the daily afternoon, at that time, Minneapolis Tribune paper. Mm -hmm. And you know, Mr. LaFont took it from me and I was out the door in that. So being in a bar isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially in small town USA when you're delivering the paper. Okay, so there. How is that for salacious? Well, like, fair fair enough. Enough. Yeah. But I thought you were going to say you but, put on a dress and some makeup. No, no I had money. Okay. Here's my first every, reason. All right. Every so often, in fact, I remember one day, it was just before Christmas, I was on my way out, and a guy in a suit said, Wait a minute, boy. And he was taking one last drink of his uh, scotch or so. I don't know what he's drinking. <laughs> Whatever. He it says, It's drink. Christmas here. And uh, he holds out, he had a pocket full of change. And I grabbed a nickel. He said, no, take more than that. So I grabbed a whole bunch of change and I walked up. Is that man Barack Hussein? I don't know, he but everybody in the bar laughed when they saw me reach and grab yeah. all of it. You were real polite the first time. I was time. polite the first nice. time. Yeah, he gave you uh, Yeah, that's right. So it was a good laugh. Yep. Well, being in a bar in and of itself is nothing. But mm. the, the actions that this child is, is doing and is being put out to do and has been taught to do. Yeah, he's a this sex is, worker. This is can this not child come even from legally anywhere. consent? Yes, to sexual activity. No. This did not no. legally, unless unless now somehow New York has wow. ten year olds being able to consent. It's and coming next. You're going to ban your soda and legalize child prostitution. There you go. Um, hey, they've already legalized child murder. You know, murder the well, the, yeah. the actually born. Really, at that so, point, you're right. The moral landscape has been leveled. They can oh, do they, anything now. I they, mean, whatever. The real watch out, old people. You don't think they're going to ration the healthcare? They've <laughs> gone beyond. Awakening. They've gone beyond the line. Now they're just now they're just seeing how much more they can get. Yeah, it's complete. And, uh, you know, a descent into depravity and lasciviousness. Yep. A symptom so, of that is that we're into the first. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as you're the first this or the first that. I'm the first anything. So if we could just, you know, elect a goat. Well, you're, you, know. you're, you brought up DHS. Transgender and, and, goat. And here's the problem. <laughs> is here we have a child who is actually being a sex worker. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. where is the concern from the New York version of DHS? Right. What I they find amazing is where's, that I had the left the pushing back on the veracity of this story, saying, oh, where's the evidence? Where's the oh, evidence? I saw it's that. on I saw video. You can't post the link. There are videos or interviews. Time out here. Can we just, yeah, okay. no more five syllable words out of him. Yeah. I don't know what they mean. I, know. I <laughs> pretend. I'm just pretending. I do the James A. Are you talking about that. veracity? Google. Lasciviousness. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a place. Uh, <laughs> Dot com. It's like the opposite of Sesame Street. Do not go there. Yeah. <laughs> but it it is it is shameful. It, it it there are laws on the books 
there have to be law those laws well, in isn't New York. it funny and I, how they pick and choose i plead ignorance and so for my friends in new york <laughs> uh, who might see this please respond um, let us know what the laws really but i want be. people to really understand the gravity of this this is a serious issue and we have a two-year witch hunt into the president of the united states which apparently this guy was circumspect and all of his business activities because they got guys who were not paying their taxes 12 years ago. They were tangentially involved in his campaign for three months. He's all over the place yeah, now. Just, but know, hold on. No, it's tied in. Dared him. So we can go after the President of the United States for absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. For innuendo. For yeah. a fever dream conspiracy theory designed by boycott Rachel Maddow. Okay? He, he was, but we can't go after someone for sexually abusing a child right. in the same Southern District Court of New York? That's the time. Don't, don't, actually, don't pick on the gays, though. You can't pick on the well, gays. I'm not picking on the gays. I'm picking on <laughs> pedophiles and criminals. Yeah. I don't care if you're gay, straight, or Martian. That's it. It's a crime. Tom, you want to tell them where they can catch uh, 3D politics every week? <laughs> where can they catch 3D politics? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, you, you're on the good camera. Guys, should we do more lives? Tell us. I don't know. You mean on like 3D politics on YouTube, the yeah. YouTube channel? Yeah, just go to YouTube and search 3D politics. And, and they're on the front page of. On the front page of Sooner Politics. And I, 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 I'm up in the corner. You're in the middle of the screen. Yeah. 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 This yeah. is our only live. It might be our last live broadcast. We'll see. But, folks, I want you to watch the YouTube. Watch an episode, a random episode of the YouTube 3D Politics. Watch this one and let us know which one you like more because this one's a bit more frantic. Yeah. So. Yes. yes. Plus, it's Dave's idea. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm so putting I, it up to the people. I have a question. What about uh, what about minor uh, girls doing belly dancing, not co not collecting dollar bills, which is clearly paid for sexual behavior. It's like the judge said, I can't define pornography, but I, I know it when I see it. it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? No, uh, cultural dances such as belly dance, or let's take a Hawaiian dance or whatever. Yeah, they're moving their hips. And yes, it is. I'm being sexist now. The women do it better than the men, okay? So, anyway. Uh -huh, so, another heterosexual. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, when they're doing something like that, it... it the definition used in the pornographic statutes from our Supreme Court says designed to appeal to the prurient interests. See, that's three syllables. Oh boy, Dave. I'm going to have to go. Prurient <laughs> interests of the viewer. You know, and that's the difference between nudity and of relation to Purina. Yeah. Catch out. Yeah. So, but, but oh, yeah. you go with those but, references. Tom, does that answer your question? Does that I differentiate? Really, I, I think that actually to, to hone in on a particular difference, I think that belly dancing, the Middle Eastern style belly dancing, is sexual dancing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. At know, least it I, works on you, right? It <laughs> sure did. And then, uh, but I don't think the hula hula hooky how is sexual uh, motion. I don't know. Well, and I'll tell you this, it doesn't See, matter. You know, people were saying, you know, hey, well, is this something about the gays or LGBT? No, no, no. Imagine if it were a 10 year old girl mm -hmm. in a straight bar dancing for cash. Beagle. It would be just as offensive and illegal and wrong. You see, right. the yes. left does this thing and we buy into it. And this is where the next generation of conservatism is going. Mm -hmm. We're going to reject all these buy-ins. Well, do you beat your wife before or after dinner? No, I don't at all. I reject the premise. Yeah. This is not about LGBT. You can't pop the LGBT smoke right. strain or the black strain. Oh, if there's a minority involved, mm -hmm. it's about minorities. If there's a woman yeah. involved, it's about minorities. Which actually, women are the majority, so that doesn't make sense. It, you know, it, we, this is a shield that they use to deflect from the issue yeah. at core. Thanks. It's either right or it's wrong. It's legal or it's illegal. This is right. illegal no matter what. No matter the sexual affiliation of anyone involved. The technique you just described is them using their prioritizing group association over individual personhood. You are no longer a person, you're associated with this group. You're not a person, you're associated with this group. Okay. You're not a person, you're associated with this group. That's the And they're shield. collectivists, and ironically, what it does is it takes away all of the power from the world's smallest minority. And who was, it, who was it that asked for collective morality here just recently at the national level? Was that like Cory Booker or something? I don't know. I don't <laughs> Somebody was talking about... I found out today that Cortez just learned about uh, disposal. That's what I heard. Yeah. yeah. She just found she out... She was today food. years old. Tom, that's going to segue right into another thing. Why don't you do a station ID and I can... 
Okay, hey, this is Tom McKay interviewing all three Davids that matter right here in Oklahoma. David Van, David Oldham, and David D'Ambroso. Make sure to check out all of our videos, our podcasts up there on YouTube. Go to YouTube, type in 3D and the word politics, and you'll find our channel there. Also, look at 3D politics. Go to uh, soonerpolitics.org, and you can find uh, everything you need to know about state politics and 3D politics videos. So what's our next topic? Well, so this ties right into what D'Ambrose was saying about protecting our children against being exploited. Sometimes you have competing interests, and both interests are very valid and worth protecting. Mm -hmm. For instance, marriage versus protecting children. We had a couple, uh, a young woman, 15 years old, in Syria, you know, married to a young man. But then they both became refugees and went to Germany. Unfortunately, they didn't know there was going to be a problem, but they did not travel together. She went with her family and he went right after. When she went with, no, it wasn't actually her family, I'm sorry, I'll get the details to you. But what is they separate? She, in Germany, she was considered an underage minor and was put in protective custody. The young man comes to Germany and he says, where is my wife? I want my wife. And they, would re they refused to restore her back to her husband. They essentially kept her hostage. And the German government said, that's beneath the age of consent. We're not going to allow it. So we had a lot of do-gooders who were protecting why children would be exploited in them Muslim countries and everything. But I looked at it this way. Customarily, women do marry at an early age in the Middle East and have oh, yeah. for eons, I mean for millennia. Right. Uh, it was said that uh, the Virgin Mary was probably 14 when she's espoused to yeah, Joseph. Well, when you live to be 30 on right. average, okay. you're Middle East. So, yeah, 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 exactly. Right, so, here here here's, so, <laughs> so here's the point. It finally went to the German Supreme Court and they had hired investigators and they said, her family and his family all checks out, they all give the same narrative that this was a consensual marriage and yes it was been beneath the age that we would allow Germans to in German occupied territory, but in the Middle East if they are and they come to us already married, we have to honor that marriage. Well, a bunch of child advocates here in Oklahoma, I had a pretty prominent debate with one of them, a good friend, a man I respect greatly, and he said, this is a travesty of justice for protecting children from being exploited. And I what said... What exploitation? And yeah, but my point was, what did Jesus say? What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. That's a pretty so, hard ethnocentrism from the German government. So I just gave a scenario to make this point. Sometimes you have competing interests here. Sure. You have protecting children... But sometimes that's the excuse for overbearing, taking away liberties that do belong to people. We have these right. hypocritic, uh, hypocritical aspects to governance, such as, you know, uh, a minor, 16, 17 years old, shoots up a school, they're tried as an adult. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm not getting into the wisdom of is that appropriate or, or not, right? Mm -hmm. But what I am saying is, uh, you know, these same kids, we won't let, this, we won't let them smoke. Right. Under any conditions, right. liberals want to let them vote at 16, but right. they, you know, there are laws preventing them from yeah. renting a car until they're 25. They're kids until we're mad at them. Yeah, <laughs> they're kids <laughs> until they make an adult yeah. decision. <laughs> exactly, yeah. right. okay. exactly that we don't like. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's my point. I just okay. thought it tied in really good. good. Yeah, yeah, and you know, they're they're uh, never off my insurance till they're 27. <laughs> yeah. They're still children. Still children. And never out of your children. basement until you kick them out. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, this gets into could we Not have mine. this? You know, Not you mine. have this argument. I mean, and just for the sake of uh, interest. Yes. I mean, with people living longer and with our protracted youth of today, you know, helicopter parenting. You know, this is a new, relatively new advent in human history that people live beyond the age of forty. Uh, you know, and we have really, uh, we have really infantilized uh, our children, even our teenagers. And, and people in their 20s with these safe spaces in university. So really, they are a lot like well, children until you, they're 30 yeah. on average Keep now. in mind, my parents' generation, when they were kids, 
They both grew up on farms. A child was considered a net asset to the family by the time they were eight years old. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, because yep. they could work. I was thinking 16 because they could in the clutch. You yeah, know? yeah, no, but, uh, you know. <laughs> no, and, they could pick potatoes and they could... They could yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There was yeah. always something. Right now, a child is never a net asset to a family. Ever. Wow. Okay, so that changes a lot of the dynamics. My parents' generation growing up, I mean, allowance... Who do you think you are? You don't get allowance, you get work. You get extra work for complaining about work. Well, and this is, you know, once again, maybe society yeah. has been defeated by our own success and affluence. Yes. We never worried right. about how many genders there were when we had to work all day just to feed ourselves. But uh, now that we live to be, you know, 80 years old, and we yeah. make four, five, six, seven times what we did, right. Years ago, well, now everyone's really concerned about these sure. things. Yeah. Well, the thing is that wealth breeds idleness, and this all comes from being idle, as, as you rightly said. And you want your kids to have it better than you had, right? Except when they mouth off, and you tell them how bad you had it, you know. And, but yeah, then you let them know in the state yeah. of California, a hundred eighth trimester well, abortions are legal. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, Sam Walton, the great entrepreneur, started Walmart wrote in his only book he ever did, Made in America, he talked, he lamented about his grandchildren, that the kind of life that his kids got to enjoy when they were young, now because of their affluence and everything, his grandkids will not get that. Right, yeah. Right. They will be sheltered and of necessity be sheltered. Because you kidnap one of them, and bingo, that's a lot of millions of dollars. It's so get. funny, and I yeah. wish I knew her name, but this liberal journalist uh, started this whole free-range parenting thing, or she got onto the movement. She wrote an article about it. A couple of years after she did it, you know, I believe her. She didn't uh, do this to write an article, according to her. I believe her. She let her 8-year-old ride the subway in New York City. Oh, I heard this. 8 or 9-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a very mature child, but people just absolutely flipped out. Yeah. And oh, right. she was talking to Jonathan Haidt and, and some others in a, in a panel, and I encourage you to read Dr. Haidt's work mm -hmm. on The Righteous Mind. That's an aside. We'll, we'll talk about that later, but uh, he talks about things, uh, among other issues, and how, and he's a liberal himself, mm -hmm. how liberals lack empathy on average, and conservatives right. have far more empathy, which is the opposite of what we hear by our 93% plus liberal media and academia. Mm -hmm. Wow, really weird. Yeah. Like there's some kind of confirmation yeah. bias going on. But this free-range childhood is just this idea that, you know, hey, um, society is getting statistically far safer, and uh, children are becoming certainly too calm. And so it's all right for a kid to go and play in a park. If you know your kid, you know the park. Sure. Statistically, it's not an issue. It's far less harmful right. than riding in a car for right. that child. Is, right now, as we film here just next to Hunter Park, it's a nice park in the southern uppity part of the Tulsa metro area. <laughs> in North Tulsa, if a kid wakes up on Saturday morning before the parents and goes down to the park a couple of blocks... And they're caught unattended. Well, the park just out the back door. Let's just keep it that simple. Right. But what I'm saying Can we is see it? When, no. it, when it happens in a, quote, dangerous part of town, the parents get arrested for not having woke up before the kid and made sure they didn't go outside. Yeah. In South Tulsa, they don't get arrested because it's not dangerous in South Tulsa. Not considered dangerous. You're right. But those and so we have our Tulsa District Attorney's Office selectively prosecuting people in the poor part of town, to the higher crime rate part of town, to the extent they don't prosecute people in the uppity part of town. And so you've got a, a problem here. How do you do it? Because as a district attorney, you're like, these kids are in danger. Uh, how do you know, district attorney? You live in the uppity part of town. I want to get into some hard stuff that's not politically expedient to state, but, um, you know, there are different governing realities in different areas. Does that change your fundamental rights? No. Does that change responsibility due process? No. But, um, you know, what the stop and frisk was very effective in New York City. Yeah. According to many. Now, uh, that would be unacceptable in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Yeah. But uh, then again, we don't have, uh, you know, uh, a, a death island of a gun-free zone here that, you know, New York City was. Yeah. Uh, and is. But, you know, Giuliani did a good job uh, in decreasing violent crime. But, you know, uh, yeah. civil rights advocates would be uh, correct in being very upset about stop and frisk. Absolutely. However, it's hard to, and I'm upset about it as well. But you, when you look at it, it's almost like some of the bleach you got to dump in the water when you've got a failed leftist state. 
Uh, and it's not the best solution, uh, but it's the, one of the few things they have to work with that's acceptable to that populace. Now, I don't think it's the best idea, and I wouldn't accept it here, and I don't think it would be necessary. Here. Listen, you treat people like dogs, you'll get people acting like dogs. That's true. I think that's what you've got in New York City. And I think that's They're the point I was, exactly. The leftism had dehumanized so many groups mm -hmm. and that the mm -hmm. soft racism of low expectations, you know, the uh, the government welfare state plantation mm -hmm. of blacks and minorities created people well, that ghettoism. acted like animals. And you look at the parent. The parent yeah. was the state, this lawless leftist state, mm -hmm. and the children act as the parent. And you mm -hmm. had lawless lefties, uh, you know, filling up their, their prisons. Yeah. If civic responsibility is uh, the responsibility of everyone, it's the responsibility of no one. Mm -hmm. So once we start growing government, what I'm saying is if you, if you mention a group in general, you have mentioned no one specifically. If it's everyone's job to take out the trash, no one will take out oh, the I trash. Okay. Okay, sure. so Diffusion of responsibility. What has happened here is we have continued to get away from the self responsibility. Yeah. We've expected government to do our civic that's duty. Yeah. We've associated each other according to a group. So it's like, oh, that's your group's responsibility. Well, and we're no longer taking our own personal responsibility. Even to the point where we won't defend ourselves physically when we're under assault. Yeah. We won't even defend ourselves sure. when we're physically under assault. Not so, all of us. Not all of us. Not yeah. all of us. Yeah. No, no. I was going to say, you wait, think. when you're assaulted <laughs> by the police, when you're That's assaulted improperly by the police, you do defend yourself and you're dead. And they will defend and say, you should have obeyed my orders. Well, and this comes down to you do have the right to defend yourself even from the police when they are acting criminally. Yeah, fine topic. You have the, you yeah, have you the, be ready and we for need the to have a show on this. There, if you get into a fight, consequences will happen. You need to be ready for those. If you're going to take it there, it's not the, necessarily the wisest thing Full to do. Just like, process. just like coming back. And fighting a any other criminal who pulls a gun on you or whatever, and yeah. fighting back rather than submitting, it's a it's a crapshoot any which way you go. Literally, I mean, by definition, a criminal is putting your life in, in danger. As soon and as whether race, they're but... wearing a badge or they're wearing a hood, it makes or a hood and a badge makes no difference. And so, it, it, what if they're a state the legislator and they just stood up next to you in a booth? <laughs> it's well, that that you have to fight back at some point. Well, there, and and again, obviously they got out of there without without too much scrapes and. and what if it's democratically appointed Supreme Court justice and I'm KKK saying. member Hugo Black? Didn't uh, was it FDR Truman appointed him to the Supreme Court? What if it's uh, you know hero of Hillary Clinton? Uh, Robert Burton, he's wearing a hood, mm -hmm. you know, and he's the government. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think as soon as you raise the cost for these sort of encounters, we'll see fewer of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes, we will. Almost everything we talk about that is a problem has to do with a disregarding of personal responsibility and mm -hmm. an, a, an acceptance of government responsibility. Are we yeah. brave enough to take a question from yes. uh, yeah. chat here? Yeah. And I, for those people seeing me looking down, I'm just trying not yes. to ignore him. I'm trying to wait reading your notes. To I'm just doing my text. Yeah. Yes. This yes. is all scripted. You know, I'm, and, and I'm going to have to get going here because I've that's got fair. Oh, to get so to, he's so important. He's got to go I have a he's got to work again. I don't have to right. go anywhere. Last right. question. This guy, Blake long. Barber, and he's been the all-star of this. And I haven't, I haven't had a chance to read it all, but Let's he's just I like awesome. him already. He said, no media ever talks about the, the life of mass shooters and how they become who they are. Murderers are not born, they're created. But he says, what do you guys, and this is the question that he posed to us, what do you guys think of reforming family and divorce courts along with child support to be a major catalyst for righting the American ship? And then his commentary is the connections, relationships, and sense of community have been eroded. That's why people are scared for their children. But the question he's asking is, what do we think about this? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I agree completely. Uh, having been through this, the system, as it were, um, being divorced, and having, as a, as a male, having absolutely no rights. Yeah. And, and just, it was, hey, she filed... Suck it up. And you have you the right to write a check, Dave. You have a right to write a check, right. and you have the right to Any leave fault. the house by X date or whatever or and get you your want. stuff out. 
and you have the you there there shall be no discussion of it um if you have gone to arbitration and she doesn't want to arbitrate she just wants gone then you have the right to you know suffer under my adjudication which is done like on the order literally on the order of um of small claims court the way they do it now here's the thing that i have to bring in when you have suits at common law and it is going to be anything more than twenty dollars the <laughs> eighth amendment says you have a right to a jury trial and that has never been used and it must begin to be used and before inflation especially for divorce 1791 what's twenty dollars um, worth today it, it 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 is there in in the Constitution, you have the right. They will try to tell you twenty dollars isn't twenty dollars, but it doesn't matter. With all the money you're going to pay for for child right. support, you are way over anything. They will try to say Boy, are, it's still twenty bucks. You we have are the right getting to a so far to the trial. weeds that no, I, I'm I tempted to agree with leftists here no. about inflation on the twenty bucks. I'm tempted. <laughs> I'm tempted. I'll hear arguments uh, on both it sides. Matter. You're, you're, you're gonna you're gonna. To you're back to our to our viewers' more. question had to do with family courts, and I think that he's on to something about revamping the family courts in the same way we are currently revamping the drug court mm -hmm. and uh, the mental health, yeah. the way yes. that we deal with men. I think all three of those are yeah. basically because well, what affects the family? The mental health and the drug yeah, problems. And the DHS. And then, then you're, then you're off because, the races. Because as soon as you get into, into, into divorce, you are talking about bringing the state into the family and into the family mix. Well, they're into already the there. The state, the state tells you if you're married or, or not. Family, yeah. The state well, tells you you're going to tax it, break It is or in not. a completely different way because if, you, if, the, if the marriage stays intact, you have some protection against the state because you have some anonymity. But as soon as you get in there, you don't any longer have that anonymity. They have injected themselves in, and they will not remove themselves. They always want to remain, uh, have, have the option to step in because the parents are not agreeing. And so they will never step away from that because I tried that, and that was exactly the wording that was used to describe well, it to me. you've got a little bit different thing in uh, California courts. This was California. The People's in, Republic in, of. In, <laughs> o in Oklahoma courts, uh, if there has been any DHS action on a family regarding their children, mm -hmm. then when a divorce is filed, DHS is automatically enjoined in that divorce proceedings. Anything that happens, they have to check up on. If there hasn't ever been That's a even DHS, worse than California. Yes, but <laughs> no. Way worse. If there has not been any DHS activity regarding okay. your family, then DHS is not a party to that okay. divorce. Okay. So it's a little bit different here. Right. And unless it's changed in the last ten years, I know I have close family who went through the process here in Oklahoma. Give However, uh, it's, but in Oklahoma, if your kids are somewhere in their teen years, a court can actually uh, assign an attorney for the children. Well, and it's even, even they, children at all ages actually re can receive attorneys. Both CASA and then um, a friend um, in the political circles is also an attorney and she is um, looking out for the best interests of the child. Okay, that's where a Casa different. is looking out for the for the best outcome for the child. That's and a, a little, little bit different. different. But I, they they all yeah, get okay. representation. We in have to clarify election. that a guardian ad litem is much more like Casa does. It means what we think is best for the child, whereas an attorney for the child is actually representing what that child says is their best interest, and that kicks in about age twelve or so. Uh, that you can have an attorney for the child. Uh, a child has a lot more latitude when they get 14, 15, 16 as far as yes. their wishes and the outcome. But at age 12, they don't. However, their attorney has power. So I watched a family, close family, that uh, actually you had three sets of attorney and it was a three-way divorce settlement. <laughs> and, so, and all three sets of attorneys had to sign off on them. Mm -hmm. And so it's... Yeah, every state is a little bit different here, and uh, but the only winners 
the only winners in any divorce are the, the attorneys. The attorneys. Yeah. They come out big time. What is the and, most and practical so, and simple step or steps we could take to equalizing and bettering the outcome for children, equalizing uh, men and women in divorce proceedings? Well, the biggest detriment to the family unit was actually uh, what happened during... Uh, you're talking, about about no you're talking about welfare. LBJ. Great Society. The Great Society uh -huh. reforms when the woman could kick out her no good husband and the Great government state would be her, her bad. Yep. She's yeah. married the, the to the biggest, state. The biggest thing that we can do is end welfare. Because, because if, I mean, you, you, saw, you saw it even with Obama. The, the single women looking to government to be provider, we're voting overwhelmingly for, for Obama. I want and my Obama was, phone. Give me and, my Obama phone. No, 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 no. no and, and that was the that was that <laughs> wow. came out then. It this is not something that I'm making up. This was no. something that was that was that mm. they were well, they, they celebrated were record participation in and food stamps and snap. Right. All of that. And and so the thing is that when you have when you have this uh, this government as father, as protector, as provider, provider. Then, then you have no need of the man. It's and, very Soviet and You don't have to work things out in a couple and make things work. You just, yeah. you just demand, hey, you're, you've got your fallback. And so whether you, you know, you've got the fallback of the government, you're going to make the man pay, the woman's going to get off and fairly scot free. When sort the of. man state says you must buy health insurance, well, you must obey. Yeah, and your now, patriarch. Rolla Tomasi makes a good point on the other side. He, given this scenario, uh, the Rational Mail, it's great blog. I oh, listen yeah. to him right. on Friday mornings on local radio. That came at yeah. 70 a.m. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he, make him pay for that. He makes you pay. Okay. <laughs> Down <laughs> also for Senate, right? So, but. I just wanted to let me on the show. It's gotten again. to the point where marriage, according to Rolo Tomasi, isn't even a net gain for a man. Right. He loses way more than this is his position. And I heard a good debate, he and Piper, uh, Dr. Everett Piper were talking, and Piper said, yeah, it is that bad, but, you know, call me a fuddy-duddy, but I'm still going to hold out for the way God intended the family to be. And but that's it, where the fud held the line. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. kidding. It, it really, it's, it's a bad situation, and uh, yeah, you go to divorce court, you're a man that's two strikes it's right there. Well, a uh, couple of points. Uh, first of all, we don't want to do away with welfare. Welfare is what the church does. We want to do away with elemocenary spending by the state. No, 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 no. no. Tall, I what does that mean? Oh, wait, oh, talk uh, about how many Trying things? to keep up with Jimmy here. L-M-N-O. Elemocenary. This is, this is state spending that has to do with charitable welfare. Any welfare, anytime the government does welfare spending, they're encroaching on the work of the, of the church. Well, not only that, but they're actually having to take funds from your property... So they're having to take your property, meaning that they're violating your property rights, in order to do it. Because if it's not voluntary, then, then it's it is. elemosinary. And then it's theft. Okay, and then the other thing is actually is with the with the <laughs> onset of the welfare state, with mm -hmm. LBJ um, mm -hmm. and the Great Society, mm -hmm. paying single women to rid themselves of their husband, then children did become an asset. Oh, better yet. You're a sixteen year old girl and don't get along with your parents. Get knocked up. Government give you your own pass. That's that's the child being an asset to the family. <laughs> yeah. Which is what we said earlier. No, she gets her own apartment Here's now. Okay. She's a mom. Two words that I'm gonna have the viewers look up just in case they don't know what they mean. Negative externality. Those are two words that no liberal legislator understderstands the meaning of. Negative mm -hmm. externality. And I'm not going to spoil the plot for you on this That's one. That's dog just, whistle. Just never keep the tease. Dog going. whistle for something. I'm sure of it. <laughs> if I don't understand it, it's dog whistle. I have whistle. an appointment in a minute. Yeah. All right. Right. Off. Hey, thanks for tuning in for 3D Politics' first live version on Facebook. Pretty exciting. Go to SoonerPolitics.org and look for all of the exciting state information. Plus, go to YouTube and find the 3D Politics channel. I'm Tom McKay with David Van. David D'Ambroso and David Oldham right here all together in 3D Politics. We'll see you next week. Good night. All right.